All right, everyone, welcome to another review. I know people have been crying for them, but here we go, a classic review, just me and the microphone. Uh, user is not here, it's just techie today. So we're gonna be taking a look at Kaspersky Internet Security 2016. Wow, already looking at 2016, a whole year has gone by. That's amazing. Um, unfortunately, as you guys know, I didn't get to all your requests. I still have a few of them left. I'm really trying to get through all of them, and I do appreciate you guys uh, keeping me up to date and apprised of when uh, new products are released. It really helps me out in the research avenue. Uh, so keep those coming. Don't hesitate. But if I don't get to them, don't you know feel offended. I I'm, I'm trying my best to get to all of them, but uh, time is is an issue, you know, especially uh, with uh, work and stuff like that. So. Let's get on to the review here and start talking the nuts and bolts and uh, what's new with Kaspersky 2016. So first off, though, uh, let's let's uh, let's go. We're gonna go right into what's new with them. So they've introduced a couple new features here. They got uh, change control. It's called, which is designed to essentially prevent adware from installing itself inside the browser. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature right there. And uh, as you all know, AdWords is very difficult to block. So I'll be very excited to see how that exactly works on here. Uh, another feature is private browsing. And this one is really kind of redundant, I feel, just because it's, from what I understand, very similar to the in private browsing function of Internet Explorer or the incognito mode of Chrome. It's just to prevent basically uh, uh, web basically people tracking your web browsing habits and things like that. Now, maybe they've introduced something more of, uh, let's say, ghostry abilities in there where they can actually block the trackers even in the private browsing mode, so that would be kind of cool. Uh, but I really didn't uh, find much information on that. I also didn't look up much information on that. Uh, just kind of did a quick little search here and there, and uh, that's what I came up with. So. Um, realistically, I don't feel it's a major feature of the program, considering there's a lot of other things out there that do some of the same things. Now, as you all know, Kaspersky in general is very feature rich. And in fact, I do have a list here of uh, all the features of Kaspersky. And you can see definitely there is a lot of features built into their internet security suite. Um, and they do charge right now. They want $69.99, which is a little bit pricey, I feel. But considering what you get, I suppose it is a decent deal now you guys there's some issues that i do have with kaspersky now first off i was informed by someone that uh, kaspersky may not be their first recommendation due to a possible issue with them we'll call it um, they didn't elaborate into details due to the fact that i don't think they really could but um yeah, necessarily, uh, they said that they would not run it on their system. They would not trust it. Now, for the longest time, this then about three months passed, and I think I found out why. Now, this is not confirmed. I don't know if this is what they were considering or what they were basically saying, but essentially, this article right here states that uh, Kaspersky antivirus accused of creating fake malware for over 10 years. Really? Uh, and if we look right here, essentially what they were doing is they were creating malware purposely to harm other antiviruses. So what they were doing is they'd inject code into legitimate Windows processes or software. And then they'd submit that software to VirusTotal, for instance. Once VirusTotal were to market as malware, it would go out to all the other vendors and essentially they would then quarantine it. Well, that's a false positive that is going to harm their results and the fact that they are more adamant at false positives or, or or have more false positives, I should say, than Kaspersky. So that helps them out in that aspect. Now, Kaspersky claims, or at least two ex-employees claim, that um, this was all done just to prevent other programs or vendors from stealing their technology and they felt that that would punish them. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, don't know if that's necessarily true or not either. Like I said, this is a lot of claims going on here. And of course, Kaspersky denies the whole thing. So this right away sets a red flag up for me and says, I don't necessarily know if I can trust Kaspersky or if I would run this on my system ever. Now that's unfortunate because I do like the rescue disk. It has come in very handy in the past at cleaning up systems. Well, I really 
almost sometimes wish I didn't see this article because I might have to find something different because like I said, I don't necessarily know if I can trust them anymore. And this is because in order for malware to be removed on your system, it's got to have quite a bit of power to do so. And this is another point that I should bring up. I'm very kind of picky in the in the anti-malware applications I run because when you install an anti-malware application in your system, you're giving that application a lot of power and you're putting a lot of trust in whoever's behind that application to not do anything malicious to your system. Even though that's their job is to not do anything malicious, you're trusting that they're not going to do that. And by seeing this, to me, Kaspersky has lost all of my trust in a sense of my privacy and looking out for the customer and and if i feel that they're looking out more for themselves than than me the customer so um, that kind of is going to hurt their result in my mind but that's an opinion we're going to go ahead now and test out the actual program to see if it can perform up to par now kaspersky in the past has done very well but we will see how the 2016 version does so let me go ahead and close that out and this is obviously the installation and configuration of the video portion We'll call it, I guess. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and install this program. As you always know, I run as administrator. It's just one of those things I do. And uh, we're gonna see how, oh, before we do that, how big is the installer? So I downloaded this right from their website. It is 165 megabytes. That is not too terrible for today's standards. Let's go ahead and run it. See what we get. What does 2016 bring us? Okay, welcome to Kaspersky Internet Security. I want to participate in the Kaspersky network. Well, I think I'm going to be participating anyway, so I'll leave that checked. Not that I have any control over anything. All right, so right off the bat, it looks like it's installing. And uh, about five minutes remaining, it says. So, so far, I'm very impressed with the installation, I have to say. Very simple, very easy, gets the point across quick, and the user does not get confused, or should not get confused, I guess. It all depends on how easily you're confused, I suppose. Can I use the word confuse anymore in that sentence? I suppose I could. All right, everyone. So it appears as if the installation has completed. We'll go ahead and start Kaspersky right away and take a look at the interface. See if it's changed at all. All right, so it's loading the application. It states that protection is loading. And uh, their copyright is still at 2015. So I guess you can copy this, right? Yeah, no. It's Kaspersky. They won't let you do that. And this is uh, version 16, as you can see right there by the file name. And I'll just verify that with the uh, details here. So you can see the version 16.0.0.614. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we got a little Kaspersky K down there. And uh, I don't know we got loaded here. Okay. I guess you're not ready yet. Okay, so it wants me to activate. Obviously, I'm not going to do that just because I don't have a product activation, so we're going to activate the trial. It'll be good enough. We don't need 30 days. We just need three hours maximum. Because <laughs> I ain't going to spend more than three hours on this. Well, unless something interesting happens. Then I have to figure it out. So... Um, definitely uh, doing a, quite a bit to the system here. Hard drive is going uh, crazy right now. So that could also be Windows 10. I know there's some uh, performance issues with the RTM build. Anyways, anyways, uh, looks like our code has been successfully activated. So we don't want to log in. Let's just go back. There we go. Okay, so here is the 2016 interface. Um, right off the bat, I do like it. Uh, I think it's very clean and uh, very sleek. Now I do feel there's a lot of wasted space though in here. I feel that they could fill that in a little bit more. So not not too terrible though, not too terrible. All right, notification center right there. Uh, let's take a look at the scan box. Uh, database is extremely out of date. <laughs> I love how they put that in there. Extremely out of date. That's a nice little touch. Okay, so let's go ahead and update that. Let's hit that old air run update button and get that going because I don't want to do that in a VPN. That would take forever. So it's going to retrieve some updates now while we're going through the interface. Awesome. That's cool. All right. Uh, so then we got obviously we did scan over here with the option of a quick scan, selective scan. 
Uh, they got a little Dropbox right there, a task manager, running scans. Oh, that's all that is. Okay, that's not too terrible. Oh, we saw scheduled scan down there. Um, I'm all over the place right now. Uh, we got safe money right here, which is obviously an area you can add all your credentials from what I understand and uh, keep them safe in there and then automatically insert them. And you got your parental controls right here. You know, the typical uh, internet security stuff. This is actually kind of nice right here. Now, I don't think, I don't know if they had this in the previous internet security. I can't remember. Um, it's been a little while since I uh, tested it, obviously. But you have application control right over here. So you can see there are 43 uh, trusted applications, none are restricted or untrusted. So that's very similar to uh, Komodo's automatic sandbox, it looks like. Uh, network monitor right here, you can see your inbound and outbound traffic. That's nice. That's um, very, that's one of the features I like about Komodo too. And your reports right here showing any sort of neutralized threats, blocked applications, or other security issues. Um, privacy browsing or privacy protection. I'm reading two different ones there. Uh, private browsing is enabled webcam access. So that's kind of cool. Uh, supposedly it has the ability to protect your webcam from unauthorized attempts to uh, broadcast. So that'll be nice. Um, trusted application mode uh, provides a mode which can be trusted application started. On, uh, okay, so that's kind of interesting. Um, so that might be somewhat like the uh, clean PC mode of Internet uh, Komodo. It may be similar to that. So that's kind of interesting. Keep in mind, guys, I have not installed this at all. So I'm in much. I'm in the dark as much as you, kind of. Um, when it comes to this stuff, all I've done is to look up a couple things online and a sense of uh, what has changed. So um, you'll get to see my excitement in all of its glory. Uh, the cloud experience right here, as you can see, is connected, obviously. Uh, dangerous items, safe items, and processing. So it's a nice little uh, graph right there. You know, it's kind of out of date, it probably is, considering real time it's changing constantly, but it gives you kind of a rough idea. It's kind of interesting. Uh, obviously, you have an on-screen keyboard right here, but obviously there's one in Windows, too, so I feel that's kind of redundant. Uh, vulnerability scan, you can go through and run a vulnerability scan on, the, on this uh, computer. And then the uh, good old Kaspersky Rescue Disk, which is going to unfortunately open up the internet browser. Thank you. Couldn't just give me a little banner, but I guess a link is a lot less to install, I suppose. Um... So yeah, this just is going to open up a link then to download the Kaspersky Rescue Disk, Rescue Disk 10. It's kind of cool. Uh, and then obviously we got troubleshooting and stuff like that. So that does it for pretty much the uh, the additional tools right there. What do we get in other applications? Oh, this just brings us to a sales page. I don't need to do that. My Kaspersky. Uh, we got support and then settings. So here are the general settings right now. Perform recommended actions. Okay, that looks good. I'll keep that at like that. Launch Kaspersky. Yes, we want to launch Kaspersky at startup. Protection. Uh, file and virus protection. Recommended. Uh, let's see. Action on threat detection. We're going to go ahead and say delete just because that's going to give us our true results of the program for detection. Plus, it'll make it go faster. Now, obviously, when I would set this up, I would go... Okay, I'm already not liking that. Uh, so obviously if I was setting this up, I would probably choose, um, let's see, block, disinfect, disinfect. They don't have a quarantine option. That is very interesting because I usually like to quarantine. I just like to throw the whole file off, but I don't like to delete it. Um, so in this case, I'd probably choose uh, disinfect, if not possible, delete. Uh, that's probably what I would run as. Um, then obviously we have application control right here. So that's uh, neat right there. And we got uh, IM protection, mail protection, webcam access. Let's take a look at that quick. Uh, block access to webcam for all applications. Okay, that's a nice little, little feature right there. So if you are very paranoid of somebody accessing your webcam, you can go ahead and just toggle that right there. And uh, you, know, you can basically prevent them from accessing your webcam. Now, there's also this little cool feature or tool that they invented called your hand and you can turn the webcam also so that they can't see you so it's also kind of a nice feature you can do so that you know once again it's kind of redundant but for laptops if you don't want to put a little sticky note over there you can uh, definitely this will be useful uh, to check that box so that is a very useful tool I do like that 
Um, web antivirus, so this is just your web threat detection. Uh, let's see, block, allow, select automatically. I guess we'll go ahead and select action automatically. Um, hold on, I'm gonna go back there for a second and see what is advanced settings, what does that do? Oh, cool, okay. And like I said, Kaspersky is very feature rich and I know this is already a 16 minute video, I apologize for you guys, but I mean, Kaspersky does have a lot of stuff, so we're gonna try to go through as much of it as possible and I'd like to keep it under 20 though. All right, uh, automatically activate uh, Kaspersky protection extension in the browser, that's a good idea. I'm keeping that there, check URLs, configure URLs, yada, yada, yada. okay. So that looks pretty much good. Firewall, I think I'm gonna leave everything there. I don't think I'm gonna change much in that. Uh, system watcher, temp unauthorized. Okay, so this, this is almost like a system restore type feature. Uh, use following key combination screen lockers. Control, okay, use the following key combination to close a screen locker manually. Control, I have to remember this now in case we encounter this, Control, Alt, Shift, F4. So control alt shift F4 is supposedly supposed to kill any screen locker. That is a really nice feature right there in itself. Um, that is really cool to see because not a lot of not a lot of AVs offer that solution. So that'll be good against uh, ransomware, browser lockers, um, or not necessarily browser lockers, but um, that, that's really kind of a cool anti banners. So that's kind of like an uh, ad blocker type thing, anti spam, safe money. Uh, we got performance right here. Use scanning profile from idle scan. Pause. Okay, scan options right here. Actions on threat detection. Uh, notify, disinfect, delete. And then we're going to go ahead and change it to delete just because um, that's what I'm going to go ahead and select. And then scan external devices on connection prompt. Okay, so that's good for USB protection right there. And then additional, and we got quite a bit more additional stuff here. Is secure data input right here, so that's kind of cool. Uh, threat and ex um, exclusions, sorry. So okay, types of the detect software that can be criminal on your computer. For example, programs for remote control. Okay, so that might be useful. Don't know enough about it to enable it yet, but uh, definitely have to take a look at that. Uh, self-defense okay obviously enable self-defense and uh, appearance use smooth transition between windows oh nice okay cool and you can obviously opt out of that all right so i think that's pretty much the interface and um like i said before i like it i mean it's a lot more powerful than the previous one they have this nice big green banner up here versus just the green uh, computer monitor before um, however, I do think that there is a little bit in the sense of wasted space. Maybe if they would put that performance graph right here, that would be pretty cool, I think. Um, and definitely maybe put a few more things down here uh, in, t in the sense of the system or make these buttons bigger, uh, especially for touch screens. Uh, making these bigger might uh, actually be a better use of space. But at least, you know, use the space instead of having all this dead space right here. I mean, there's a lot of dead space. so. And obviously click that details wow thank you you know i do i need this whole banner right here to click no um i think if you were to cut this in half even or do something of that sort and make just the monitor clickable that would be a very nice interface design or change at least so all right i'm at 20 minutes guys i'm sorry i gotta end this because otherwise people are gonna start getting cranky at my long videos so all right that's it for part one the configuration test and the installation i hope you enjoyed it i know it was a long video but uh Stay tuned for the second part, which is going to be the malware testing portion. We're going to go ahead and throw uh, 10 links at it, as well as take a look at its zero-day capabilities. So I will see you in the, in the second video.